And we just oh, thank God. God all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. We, yes. we want thank to just you, take Jesus. time to just welcome you to Faith Temple service yes. on thank this you, morning. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, welcome Jesus. to the Hallelujah. noisy place. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, what are they so excited about? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God saved this week. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. What are we even open for? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. People's lives get changed. Thank you, Lord. So we're just so glad, you, amen. We had Andrea got saved this week, amen. Andrea amen. got saved this week. Hallelujah. 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 I remember at one time, yes. y'all don't laugh at me, amen, but I remember one time Facebook was the enemy to the church, amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Young lady got saved on Facebook Messenger. Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God. Amen. You see, I got to turn something around. Yeah, he turn it around. He said, you know what? I gave them the mentality to create social media. Mm -hmm. It all belong. Yeah. Amen. Oops. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. He knew. Pastor, you fading in and out. Thank you, Jesus. It's coming. Thank God, we want to welcome yeah. everyone, amen. I know. Yeah. We Thank welcome you. you. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Yes, Jesus. Amen. 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 Technical difficulty. <laughs> Yes, 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 praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. We welcome you. <coughs> if it's your first time with us, thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. See, ever say amen. You all fall together. You see how that goes, amen, but I'm back. Amen. So we just thank God. We're going to continue right along with the service, amen. We have, all right, can you all hear me, amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Sound well. The enemy got mad for a second, but you know what? The earth is the Lord <laughs> and the fullness thereof, amen. Yeah. <laughs> amen. amen. All that dwells in it, amen. So we just thank God. And we want to move the service right along. We have our Apostle Angela Gracie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes. She's going to preach something. I'm just looking for the word of God on this morning. Amen. And as y'all can tell, I'm a loose cannon because I'm not preaching this morning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to move right along with the service. We're going to ask our, our Deacon Nelson if he can read us a scripture on this morning. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning. Uh, Psalms 21, verses 1 through 8. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. 
the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. 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 We thank God for the reading of his most holy word. And we thank God for our thinking Nelson on this morning. And we just thank God for just the chance to just worship. Amen. To just Amen. worship Amen. together in the beauty Amen. of holiness. Amen. Yeah. We just thank God for how God is just so good to us. And um, we know that we uh, we have uh, our acknowledgement of our overseer on this morning. And I'm going to I'm going to take it myself on this morning. And uh, we want to just take um, take time out to acknowledge um, the founder of Faith Temple, um, our, our delayed overseer Jackson. Amen. Amen. And y'all just give a hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. And we, we're taking the time out. Uh, it's just like laying in memorial stones. Amen. You never throw away the stones that have been laid. Amen. And we want to just take the time out just as Amen. we acknowledge. Christ, amen, 2,000 years, you know, what he has done, and we, we are in the New Testament church, so what do we do? We take the time out to talk about Paul, amen, because we're walking in the footsteps of an apostolic generation, amen, so we take the time to, out to acknowledge Paul, so we want to take amen. the time out to acknowledge the pillar that took the, the suffering to lay the bricks of this foundation, amen. And I just thank amen. God for the, the wonderful woman of God uh, and just how she walked the earth, Amen. From here to Kenya, amen. For how God just used her for souls to be saved and for the hungry to be fed and for clothing to go on the backs of those, amen, that were naked, amen. And visiting hospitals, amen. Laying hands on the sick, amen. Father, oh my God. There are people right now that are saved because of the memories, amen of what mm -hmm. God used her to do. See, some people yeah. have not, they have not gotten close enough to the father yet to have that close relationship. So God will take somebody to point them mm -hmm. to the father. Take Amen. somebody and show them the father. And she mothered people. Amen. She yes. mothered. Yes. There are people, I mean, she walked as Hallelujah. an apostle in the earth. People look to her for support. Yes. They look her for the love of God. Amen. So we just thank God for her. And just it's been a year and a couple of months, amen, that we have uh, lost her. And it was a great loss. It was a great yes, loss yes. to amen. the world, amen, because she was amen. doing the work of the Lord. Amen. And I just thank amen. God where I stand as one that has been impacted. I stand as one that was able to look thank on her and say, wow, look how God can use somebody if they would just amen. yield themselves. And so we just thank God. We thank God for her and just in knowing that there God has raised up some, amen, through her ministry. And we just thank God for just being able to still be open. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Amen. So amen. amen. 53 years, amen, of faith temples. Thank you, we just thank God for it. And um, I'm going to move right along with the service. And we just thank of the pandemic. And I have to say this. We are in the middle of a pandemic. 400,000 plus. Mm. Us die. But we're here. God, so we just thank God on today. And um, Man, Deacon Gifford, if, Deacon Gifford, if you can hear me, can you take over for the offering? Yeah, you keep fading in and out. Yeah, it's the internet. It's all right. It's unstable. Oh, We're gonna keep on okay. moving. Amen. Deacon I'm Gifford, can you? yes, yes, ma'am. Hey, Amen. If you can just um, take over for the offering. Amen. Let me know this time is for the offering and the tithes, so ten percent of your earnings you give back to God, and He will bless the ninety percent. Amen. It's His money anyway. And we are good stewards, Father. This we just thank you right now 
We just thank you that the sower be blessed, Father. Come back full folds, Father, as a great harvest, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we know a free will offer, an offer from the heart. See, won't God bless you? You cannot beat God given. He can't outdo God. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now, Father. Bless those that give, Father, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let it come back for the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Hopefully y'all can hear me. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to ask our, we're just going to ask our, our evangelist if she can just lead us in a prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you that you bless us to live to see another day. Lord, we ask you to bless this service in a special way, God. Touch each and every one that's on the line, God. You know the need of the people, and we pray that you will meet their needs. Lord, we thank you for how you've been so wonderful and so good to us. We ask you to bless this speaker on today. Touch her in a special way. Give her a word, a rumor from on high from you, God. A word, a rainer from our hearts from you, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to tell you thank you. We can't thank you enough for all you that you've done and what you're yet going to do. We ask you to bless our pastor. Thank God for our pastor, Tina. We ask you to strengthen her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Bless every vision that she have in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for all things and everything. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. 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 amen amen we're coming we're coming close to the word of god i'm going to give the okay. announcements uh very briefly hopefully the internet will allow me to amen um we, we know that um this coming week we have our homeless outreach amen so next sunday um, we will be at north penn station doing our homeless outreach and um i want to thank god that our um i got a call yesterday for someone that had blankets for us and um, Amen. someone, they didn't tell me how many they had, but they were clearing out and they found that they had a lot of brand new blankets that they had purchased and they wanted to donate those blankets to the mission. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we'll be getting those blankets tomorrow so that we can start the care bags. So just keep in mind, we'll be out there next Sunday um, at 3 p.m. as usual. Um, so be prayerful down through the week. Amen. Um, just praying that souls be touched while we're out there. Amen. Amen. Uh, last month, a soul got saved while we were out there. Amen. amen. A soul got saved while we were out there. We got, we got her on the amen. line with us. Amen. Cece's with us amen. now. Amen. amen. Thank, thank you, God. Jesus. Thank God we gained two because we gained Cece amen. and her five-month-old Nyad as well. Amen. Last month. Amen. amen. While we were out there. So we just thank God for God always See, we're going out there to do one part of his work. And he's saying, you know what? There's a great commission. So why are you out here? Take care of this. <laughs> so we just thank God Amen. for that. And um, we know that um, we also have our Black History Month coming. Amen. So every Thursday in Amen. February, um, the Thursdays, our sister Krista Nelson will be in charge. And we will be talking about some great um, African-American person that has done something that is phenomenal. Amen. So we want to tune in, um, tell somebody young, amen, so that they can tune in and see what it is that God has used these people to do um, throughout the earth. So every Thursday we'll be doing that in February. Tell some. well amen because we're going to be having a uh, valentine's day brunch with the pastor and uh, our deacon gift i asked our sister barbara if she would just sing something and then we're going to be in the hands of our apostle gracie Amen. You there, Barbara? You gonna have to go to store just to get a. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mr. Barbara, are you there? You are great. 
you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Thank you. No one else like you. You are great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Amen. Amen. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. 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 There's no one else like you. Amen. Amen. Like amen. So we just thank God. We thank God for that. We know that there's no one else like him. Amen. And um, our apostle uh, doesn't even need an introduction. Amen. Faith Temple, we know that we know her well. Amen. And um, we know that she is the, uh, the, the CEO, amen, of uh, uh, Angelic Grace Ministries. And she's a, a great teacher. And um, she heads up the pastors and leaders training that some of us have graduated from, amen. And um, she is a daughter of Apostle Ricky, Richie Halsley, amen. And we, you know, we are the, I am now the house of Halsley, amen. So we just thank God and we're gonna turn her, turn it into her hands and the Lord will do the rest of the introducing, amen. It's in your hands, Apostle. Amen. Good morning, good morning, Faith Temple. God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am delighted to be here this morning and God has given me a word to share. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Turner, for having me. God bless you all. Let's just open with a word of prayer quickly. Father, thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to share a word with the body of Christ. Father, I pray that hearts are open, minds are open, that you would uh, so plant in your field and your people, Father, and that you would give the increase. There are those of us who plant and those who water, but you give the increase, Father. And so my prayer today is for increase in the body of Christ and faith temple. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Let it fall on good ground. Let it break up the foul ground within us, O oh God, and may it produce fruit that remains from this day forward. We thank you for what you're going to do in our lives this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Amen. God bless you. So, beloved body of Christ, I said, Lord, I was asking him, what did he want to say to Faith Temple today? And the word that God wants to share is, it is an all-encompassing word. It is a word not only for the leaders, but also for the youth and particularly our new children in Christ, our new babies in Christ. So some of you are going to hear things that you've already heard before. But that's okay. Just hang on in. God can always refresh us, can't he? So, um, hi there, Tanisha. I see you, darling. Uh, So we are going to share a word today. And I want all of you, especially you new babes to Faith Temple, I want all of you to have your ears perked up. Amen. Because God wants to say something specifically to you. 
And the first thing that he wants you to know this morning is that you are his daughter. And he is your heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And the second thing he wants you to know is that he loves you with an everlasting love. You are the apple of his eye. He put his hand on you. His hand is upon your life. He is orchestrating your steps. He sees you. He knows everything that you're going through. He knows everything that's happening in your life. And he wants you to know today that he's talking just to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So turn with me in your Bibles, because you know, this is Father talking. Turn with me in your Bibles, please, to, um, let me turn my phone down. Because my family, they love to talk on Sunday mornings. <laughs> <Trust me. laughs> okay, you ready? Turn to with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm actually going to start at verse 1. And as I move through this word, God is going to uh, has something to say to leaders as well as the new babes that have just become children of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. I want you to know that I'm a daughter, just like you're a daughter. Amen? My, 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 the, my given function in the body may be an apostle, but I'm a daughter. And I have a spiritual father, just like you have a spiritual father. And I have a heavenly father, just like you have a heavenly father. Amen? And between us, God doesn't prefer one more than the other. I was ministering this morning on, I was talking about Apollos and Paul. And Paul was admonishing the believers not to behave like the world and be childish and say, that I follow Apollos and you follow Paul. And he says, listen, we're both workers in the kingdom. We're both have a purpose. One of us plants, the other one waters. But the important thing to know is that God is the increase. Amen. And so I want to start out this morning just letting you know that I'm a worker. Right along with Pastor Tenna. We are both workers together. We both have a purpose, and the Father says that when the fullness of time comes, we're going to each be re rewarded for the work that we did. Amen? But no matter whether I'm planting or, am, or if I'm in the position of watering or vice versa with Pastor Tenet, but it is God who gives the increase in your life. Amen? And we are but his vessels. Amen? And we are sowing in the field and you are the field. We are building a building, and you are that building. Amen? And God has called each of us to take heed how we build, to be careful how we build the body of Christ. I want to encourage you to go on YouTube and look at today's message. I'll have it posted. It'll be, excuse me, it will be up later today. Mm -hmm. But God is wanting us to know that we are called to be careful how we build mm -hmm. the body of Christ. And that's you. Amen. But he has some specific things to say. So let me just get into the word and then we'll go as we go along. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't imagine us leaders. I'm reading to you in the message version this morning because I think it brings a certain clarity that I want to bring out today. Mm -hmm. And if you have Bibles with other versions, of course, you can always read it in the New King James or in the New Living Translation. But I thought that it'd be more appropriate to read this with clarity because I know that I'm reading to some of the youngins and I want to bring as much clarity as possible. Amen? Amen. So don't imagine us leaders to be something that we aren't. We are servants of Christ, not his masters. We are not his master. No servant is greater than his master. Amen? We are guides into God's most sublime secrets, not security guards posted to protect them. So I, it's not our role to protect God's secrets and to keep you from them. Amen? But we are merely guides. 
And it says the requirements for a good guide are reliability and accurate knowledge. It matters very little to me. This is Paul talking. It matters very little to me what you think about me. Even less where I rank in popular opinion. I don't even rank myself. Comparisons in these matters are pointless. I'm not aware of anything that will disqualify me from being a good guide for you, but that doesn't matter much either. The master makes that judgment. And who is the master? Mm -hmm. The master is Jesus Christ. He's our example. The master is our father and the face of Jesus Christ. So it doesn't matter, even if there was something that would disqualify us, it doesn't really matter because it is he who qualifies us. Amen? Verse 5. So don't get ahead of the master and jump to conclusions with your judgments before all the evidence is in. When he comes, he will bring out in the open and place in evidence all kinds of things that we never even dreamed of even the motives and purposes and, and prayers. Only then will any of us get to hear the well done of God. Verse 6. All I'm doing right now, friends, is showing how these things pertain to Apollos and me. See, he's referring back to that conversation I told you about with Apollos. He said, I'm just showing you how these things pertain to Apollos and me so that you will learn restraint and not rush into making judgments without knowing all the facts. It's important to look at things from God's point of view. And I would rather not see you inflating or deflating reputations based on mere hearsay. That's an important principle, an important word for those of you who are new in Christ. That you stay close to the family where God has placed you. Amen? Don't get caught up in the inflating or deflating of, of opinions and reputations of, of uh, other leaders. Uh, you know, today in our modern vernacular, you might hear people say, you know, well, I listen to T.D. Jakes or I listen to, um, you know, uh, what's my other boy, Joel Osteen or, you know, whatever, right? And I'm not disparaging these guys. What I'm saying is, to you, especially as youngins, not to get caught up in their reputations and their notoriety as if they have more to offer than those whom God has placed with you. Amen? Because what makes a good guide, as Paul says in the first paragraph, is one that is reliable and has accurate knowledge, who is ministering from God's point of view who is uh, laying a foundation that is laid in Jesus Christ and under no other foundation are they, are they uh, ministering. Amen? So I want to encourage you, even as you begin in your walk, you know, you can, uh, my mother used to say when we were kids, my mother was famous for, for, I guess a lot of mothers were, but she used to always tell us, don't be running in and out of other people's houses. Stay in your own house. <laughs> Eat at your own table. Don't be going in other people's houses, eating their food. Not that they're trying to hurt you or anything, but she was like, you don't know how they, you don't know what they do, how they prepare. Am I right, Pastor Tina? You, we don't know how they do their thing, right? So you don't want to be eating at everybody's table and going in everybody's house and eating at their table. Come home and eat from your own table. Amen? And so it's important for you in this early stages of your walk to eat at the table where God has placed you. Eat at the home where God has you. Amen? The time will come when you will grow up and be mature enough to know whose home you can eat at and whose home you don't want to eat at. Amen? You'll be able to discern who is preparing a good meal, a healthy meal, and who isn't preparing a healthy meal. Amen. You will be able to tell by their kitchens and how their kitchen looks, whether or not you want to eat in their kitchen. Amen. But those things come in time. When you are children, you eat at your parents' house. You eat at their table and you stay home. Amen. Matter of fact, these days, just in the natural, just talking just 
plain everyday life. It's dangerous to be running in and out of people's houses right now. <laughs> Amen. It's a dangerous thing. And it can cost you a lot more than just false doctrine. Amen. So we don't want to be doing that. God says stay with the trusted, with the reliable uh, uh, man or woman of God who is a good guide, who is reliable and has accurate knowledge. Amen. For So he goes on to say, let's just read through in verse 7. For who do you know that really knows you? Who that really knows your heart? And even if they did, is there anything that would dis they would discover in you that you could take credit for? Is there anything in you that you can take credit for? Isn't everything that you have and everything you are sheer gifts from God? So what's the point of all this comparing and competing? One of the things that we do a lot and often in the body of Christ is compare ourselves to each other. I don't want you to do that, beloved. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a unique gift to the body of Christ. You're going to discover in your new walk with God that you have gifts and talents and abilities that you probably never even thought you had. But God is going to begin to work in you to reveal himself in you. He's going to begin to establish you and affirm you as his daughter. Amen. God loves his daughters. And I'm telling you, me and Tina can attest to the fact, and many of us can, Pastor Barbara, God takes care of his girls. He takes care of his girls. I don't care what you've done or where you've been. God loves you. All of that is under the whatever came before you came to know Christ is under the blood of Jesus. I told the, 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 uh, those who were in our class yesterday, this is when the enemy comes in, this is what I want you to tell him. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. I want that to be one of the first passages of scripture you remember, that you put to memory, that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The second one is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where he says that, I believe it's verse 11 or 12, where he says, behold, uh, uh, um, we are new creatures in Christ Jesus, and behold, old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't mean, and that all, when it says all things have become new, he's saying all things have become new in your spirit. All things have been regenerated new in your spirit. Your new man has been born. Amen? I don't mean that your circumstances may not have changed. Maybe you, you certainly, we all live in the same house today that we lived in yesterday, right? <laughs> we all have the same children today that we had yesterday. We have the same clothes today that we had yesterday. It may not be a whole bunch that looks like has changed in the natural. Oh, but on the inside, you are being renewed day by day. Amen? And that is the part that God is paying attention to. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And the enemy is going to try to come and throw in your face all the stuff that happened before. And I want you to tell him there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? There's no point in comparing or competing because you are uniquely you. And guess what? Can nobody be you but you? He says in verse 7, he says, who really knows you but you? Who really has your knows your heart but you? The only person who really knows the intricacies of your heart on the inside is you and the Father. God knows you intimately and intricately there's nothing about you that could make him not love you. Those of you who have children, is there anything in you that can make you not love your children? Is there anything in them that can make you not, not love them? Last week or maybe two days ago, you had to give them a spanking or you had to scold them about something. But that didn't mean that you didn't love them, did it? Did you just turn them loose and, and give them away because they did something they shouldn't have done? Absolutely not. And your heavenly father will never do that to you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In Psalm 139, he said, there is nowhere that
that you can possibly go on planet Earth. There's nowhere that you can go to escape his notice. There's nowhere that you can go to escape his hand. Amen. He said, if you make your bed on the far side of the desert, I'm there. If you make your bed in hell, even there, my eyes will see you. Light is as darkness to him. There's no, you can think you're hiding in the dark. You can turn the lights out if you want to, but God can still see you. In the dark. Amen. So he loves you just the way you are. Without you having to do one other thing. Amen. There's nothing that you have to do to earn his love at all. Amen. Do your children have to sing for their supper? Do they have to dance a jig to get you to feed them? No. Because you're their parents and they and you know the things that they have need of. You know that they have to eat every day. You know they need a warm bed to sleep in. You know they need a roof over their head. And so you do all the things that you need to do to make sure that they have those things. Do we not? How much more does our Heavenly Father take care of us? How much more is he paying attention to the things that we have need of? And we don't have to be like anybody else. I don't have to be like Pastor Tenor. Pastor Tenor doesn't have to be like Barbara. Pastor Barbara doesn't, Evangelist Barbara doesn't have to be like uh, um, uh, uh, Deacon Seymour. We don't all have, we don't have to be alike. Amen. And God loves us all the same. He says, you, uh, uh, Paul goes on to say, you already have all that you need. You already have more access to God than you can handle. How about that? <laughs> you already have access to Jesus Christ because he's already uh, praying for you 24 hours a day. You already have access to the Spirit of God who is our comforter and our paraclete and the one who comes alongside to help us and to lead and guide us into all truth. He's Look, you have access to truth that you can't even handle yet. You've got everything that you could possibly need. And I hope the Holy Spirit just told me, and guess what? Can nobody take it away from you? Can nobody take the Holy Ghost from you? Can nobody take Jesus from you? Once you are his, you are his. Amen. Jesus said that all those that God has given into his hands, that nobody can pluck them out of my hand. You are a keeper. You've been got as they say. Amen? You have been begotten, and God loves you just the same. He says, without bring, he says, and you have all this without even bringing either Apollos or me into it. You're sitting on top of the world, at least God's world, and we're right there sitting alongside of you. If we were talking now, I would, instead of Apollos and Paul, I would say, you don't even, without even needing me or Pastor Tenna or, or Evangelist Barbara, without even needing us, you've already got everything that you need. You already have everything in the world. And guess what? We're here, right here alongside you. Amen? You stuck with us. We're right here alongside of you. Amen? He said, it seems to me that God has put us, now this is for our leaders. It seems to me that God has put us who bear his message on, on stage in a theater in which no one wants to buy a ticket. He's put me and Pastor Tenna and Evangelist Barbara and those other of us in the fivefold, Prophetess Christy and those others who have come to uh, be with you, um, our dad, Apostle Richie, he has put us on stage in a theater where nobody wants to buy a ticket. We're something that everybody stands around and stares at, like an accident in the street. We're the Messiah's misfits. You might be sure of yourselves, but we live in the midst of frailties and uncertainties all the time. We're always going to the Father to help us in our weakness, that his strength might be made perfect in our weakness. Sometimes the world, you know, you might think you've got it all going on, but we don't think that way all the time, that we've got it all going on. We need the help of God every single day. Amen? 
And he says, but we're mostly kicked around. Much of the time, we don't have enough to eat. We wear patched and threadbare clothes. We get doors slammed in our faces, and we pick up odd jobs anywhere we can to eke out a living. When they call us names, we say, God bless you. And when they spread rumors about us, we put in a good word for them. We're treated like garbage, potato peelings from the, from the culture's kitchen. And it's not getting any better. I'm not writing all this as a neighborhood scold just to make you feel rotten. I'm writing as a father to you. I'm writing as a father to my children. I love you and I want you to grow up well and not spoiled. You know, many of your leaders in the body of Christ, we suffer all kind of atrocities. We have, we have gone before and suffered betrayals. We've had people lie on us. We've had people say all manner of evil things about us. We've had other leaders abuse us and misuse us. But it was all a part of our training, all a part so that we would be equipped to equip you. And so sometimes you may hear some of those stories. And when we, as we're in our healing class, we're going to hear some of those stories. But I want you to know it's not to make people feel bad or to somehow pat ourselves on the back for what we've gone through, but so that others understand that they grow up well and know what to expect. And so that you won't grow up spoiled thinking that uh, even as new, new uh, Christians, life for you isn't always going to be a bed of roses. I don't want you walking through the gospel with rose colored glasses. I don't want you to be afraid, but I don't want you to think that everything will be wonderful for you from this point forward. Amen. We suffer for the cause of Christ. We don't suffer the way some of these apostles, I mean, Paul's got a list. Dad told me any apostle worth his salt's got a list. And if you if you ever uh, walk through your apostolic training, you have suffered beatings, you suffered scourges, you suffered people trying to assassinate your character. You have you have gone through the mill. Amen. Now they suffered physically even, you know, and uh, for the cause of Christ. We haven't had to go through a lot of stuff that Paul went through physically. I mean, Paul was beaten with uh, lashes. I mean, till his skin was torn. And I mean, he, he went through some stuff. He's been shipwrecked. I mean, I never had anybody leave me out in the middle of the ocean for a couple of days. <laughs> But Paul went through some stuff, but we've, I've gone through some wilderness experiences that made me feel like I was out there in the middle of the ocean by myself with nobody to care about me. I've been, I felt like that. Amen. So there are your leaders who have suffered a lot, but it's so that you will not be spoiled, that you will grow up well and grow up well-rounded. So I, you know, it, it's important for you to understand that there is an assault. There is going to be uh, some opposition from the enemy as you begin your walk in Christ. Amen. But I want you to know that that is to be expected. That is to be expected because he doesn't want you to continue. He doesn't want you to grow up well. Amen. But I want you to know here today that you are not by yourself. As Paul tells us here, we have the fullness of our heavenly family. We have our Father. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the Holy Spirit now living on the inside of you. You have uh, uh, Pastor Tenna. You have myself. Amen. You're going to have people. You will be taught many things by different people. Amen. But what you need are fathers. What you need is a father and a mother. And so I come to you today wearing my parent hat my apostolic parent hat to let you know that God loves you, that your heavenly father loves you, that you are a son and a daughter and how you have inheritance. Amen. You know, when a child is adopted, they take, they, they take on the name of their new family, right? And they often receive and the, the inheritance of their new family just like as if they were a natural kid. That's what the whole purpose of adoption is for, right? And so you all have been adopted into the household of God. You have a new family and a new inheritance, and you are firmly established in God's house. You are not a slave. You are not somebody looking from the outside in. You know, children have a key 
the key to their parents' house. Right? You have a key. You have a key to your father's house. And that key is Jesus Christ. Amen? God wants you to know today who you are and where you stand and what he wants for you. Amen? And he wants you to not be ignorant of Satan's devices. And Paul goes on to say there are a lot of people around who can't wait to tell you what you're doing wrong. But there aren't many fathers willing to take the time and the effort to help you to grow up. That's what you want. Those who are willing to take the time and the effort to help you to grow up. And that's what we're here for. To make this, we're here to make disciples. We're here to help you to grow and to be transformed and to conform into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen? Don't, my mother used to say, uh, well, some, well, not my mother, but sometimes I would say to Tony, I would say, he would say, you love me, baby. And I would say, yes, I do. I love you. Love you to, to the bone. And I'll say, guess what? And don't let nobody tell you different. And I want you to know today, God loves you. And don't let nobody tell you different. Don't let the devil make you think that you are not his son or his daughter. Don't let the devil tell you that God doesn't love you because of your behavior. This is not about what you did or what you do. This is about who you are. And who you are is a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Amen? Don't let nobody take it away from you. Guard it with your life. Amen? Yes. You may not have many fathers, and that's why God is raising up apostolic fathers and apostolic mothers to love you and to care for you, not just teaching you what the word, there's a lot to learn in the word of God. There are many principles to learn, many scriptures to memorize, and all of those things are wonderful. But in addition to that, you need to be raised. Children need to be raised. You know, when they go to school, you send your kids to school, right? And they go to school for four, five, six hours a day. And after they go, go to school, they come home. Well, their learning doesn't stop when they leave school. Amen? In other words, their upbringing, it takes more there's more to their upbringing than just going to school five or six hours a day. When they come home, there are other things that have to happen. They have to be taught manners and taught how to share and taught how to respect one another's property and taught how to be courteous to one another, how to say thank you and please and those kind of things. Do all of those things go into raising a kid. So it's good to have teachers. It's good to go to school. But then when you finish with school, you need good, solid parenting, as Paul says, good guides that have accurate, that are reliable and have accurate knowledge. I'm going to talk a lot more about that uh, for those of you who are walking through our healing class. But we're going to talk about, you know, uh, the importance of that, the importance of recognizing that. Amen. That we are indeed. Uh, in need of fathers. And we're going to talk about what that looks like. What do spiritual parents look like? Amen. Well, I can tell you one thing today. You get a freebie today. <laughs> they are guides who are reliable and they have accurate knowledge. And they care for you. Paul says that he cares about how they grow up. He said, I love you. I'm writing to you as a father. See, they were begotten of Paul in the gospel. We understand uh uh, our spiritual dad was teaching us that when somebody does something for the first time, they become the father of that thing. And so whoever uh, uh, ministered the gospel to you the first time becomes the, the person who begotten you in the, in the gospel. Amen? And that person loves you. And they want to see you grow up well. I know that that's Pastor Tennant's heart. She wants to see you grow up well, grow up well-rounded, not all freaked out and, and, you know, without understanding and lacking maturity, but that you grow up well. That's all any of us want for our children, spiritual children and natural children, that you grow up to be good, law-abiding, uh, uh, contributing members of society uh, who know how to walk and live right. That's what we desire. That's what any parent wants. 
And if you don't have somebody in your life who's doing that, listen, they're not the one then to follow you. Amen. Maybe your relationship with them will be something different. It, and, and so Paul says, as I just said, he says, it was as Jesus helped me proclaim God's message to you that I became your father. Because Jesus helped him to proclaim the message to them, the message of salvation. Amen. And he says, I'm not, you know, I'm not asking you to do anything that I'm not already doing myself. He said, this is why I sent Timothy to you earlier. He is also my dear son. See, Paul had sons. The same things that he's saying to you, he's doing himself. And that's why I started out by telling you, I'm a daughter too. I'm not saying anything to you that I'm not doing myself. Amen? That I don't recognize myself. He is also my dear son, and he's true to the master. He will refresh your memory on the instructions that I regularly give to all the churches on the way of Christ. Amen. He will refresh your memory on the instructions. I just came by today to give you some instructions on my way to all the churches. Amen. And that is to let you know that God loves you with an everlasting love. He loves all of his sons and daughters. And before you learn how to pray, before you learn how to sing in the choir, before you learn how to speak in tongues, before you learn how to teach a Bible study, before you learn how to do outreach, before you learn how to do any of those things, you don't have to do anything else but be a son. Jesus, when he started his earthly ministry, he emerged and the Father had the dove descend upon him, and he said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. He was pleased with Jesus before his ministry even started. He loved him as a son before he turned the water into wine, before he fed the 5,000, before he stilled the storm on the sea, before he did any of those things. The father said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. You are his son. You are his daughter in whom he is well pleased today. Not after you think you've got to go run through some treadmill and do 50 million things. Today, you are his daughter in whom he is well pleased. I love you like a mother today. I love you like a father today. And I thank God that you are now a part of the family. And my role, my commitment to you is to come alongside, even with Pastor Tenna, and to see you grow up well, to see you mature as a son or a daughter in Christ, to see you be, not be spoiled, to see you not tossed about like the wind to and fro, amen, to establish you in your own identity, to cause you to be assured in who you are, not having to compare yourself with anybody else. Amen. And to make sure that you are, that God guides you. It is God who's going to do it, but he's going to guide you to those who will care for your soul, who will be a father and not just an instructor. Amen. That you might grow up well. Father, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for your newly birthed sons and daughters. Oh, father, whenever a child is born, we rejoice because we recognize there's so much promise. We don't know what you're going to do in their lives. We don't know what great things you have in store for them. And the scripture even, scripture even tells us that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what you have in store for those who love you and for those whom you love. But you will reveal it by your spirit. The Father says, I have great and mighty things that I want to show you that you don't know anything about yet. But he says, come alongside and let me order your steps. Let me teach you and instruct you and let me guide you in the way that you should go. And let me give to you that fivefold to equip you for the work of the ministry. And the father says, know that I love you with an everlasting love. 
before you do anything at all. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for what you're going to do in the lives of your people. And Father, use us, your leaders, your servants, those whom you have called. Use us as your instruments of wisdom and commitment and guidance that they might grow up well, fully mature, and not spoiled. It's in Jesus' name I pray this prayer with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. God bless you, beloved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just thank God. We thank God for the word of God and just we ate well. Amen. And I just thank God. We got everybody muted because I wanted to make sure there was no interruptions. Amen. <laughs> so we just thank God. And um, if you're able to unmute, you're welcome to unmute um, on this morning. And we just thank God. But what a powerful word. Amen. What a powerful word. Amen. And we just thank God. And some of the most powerful uh, messages, the most powerful uh, memories in my life, all over in a still, small voice. And we just thank God for, you know, her being able to walk flat-footed and give us a good mother's teaching on this morning. Amen. So we just thank God for it. And I know it was for the babies, but I took it for myself, too. Amen. It was a good reminder. I'm a daughter. Oh, mm -hmm. such, a good, such a good feeling not to be an orphan. Amen. But to know that God has taken us in as, as sons and daughters. Amen. It's a good feel. Isn't it a good feeling? Amen. It's a good feeling. Amen. So I just thank God for it. I thank you, Apostle. Thank you. You know, and um, just for just for just coming by to see it. Amen. Thank God. And, um, for those of you who are on the line, amen. We know that it's right to, to bless the man, the woman of God. And uh, we put in our mind the, uh, the Shunammite woman, amen, as the, the prophet came through. Not only did she want to bless, but she made sure that they had what a lamp and, and a table and a bed, a bed. So we want to make sure that we bless the apostle, amen, for her stopping by, amen. So I put you know, I did put in the um, in the chat box, amen. I put um, her website as well as um, we're putting our site up as well. Um, so you'll be able to give, amen, so that you can give and um, we can make sure that, that that gets to her, amen. That, you know, and we know that in this world, amen, how do we give? We give monetarily, amen. So this should be blessed, amen. So we have our site up and her site is up as well. Um, I put Apostle Angela's site up there because there's just so much that she does. Amen. And I see that we have so many visitors on the line today. And, you know, there may be someone on the line that, that just doesn't have a full understanding and may need mentorship. Or there may be someone that, that needs to get into a leadership class or, you know, that you might have questions. Amen. And she's a safe place. Amen. She's a safe place. And I just thank God. As she was talking, I was thinking about the fivefold. And just how beautifully working together is. And that there's no, there's no, you got to come over here to me. I'm the only one that has the answer. It does not work like that in the apostolic. We're, we're working all together and God has given some the wisdom in one area and he's given some, you know, in another. And we want to just make sure that you grow up and you get, like she was saying, that whole village effect. Amen where you're able to grow up well-rounded and balanced, amen. So we just thank God for having some aunties, amen. We got some aunties and some uncles and some fathers, and, you know. So we just thank God. And it goes right along with our Sunday school. The Sunday school was talking all about, you know, the family of God, you know, and how we we're just all one together. So we just thank God for it. And we, um, we thank God for just for all things on today. And I'm just tickled because it's nothing like eating a good word, amen. And you take it in and you just, you just well in your soul, amen. So we just thank God for her. And um, uh, we have our, our, our sister Nelson is on the line, amen. And um, see if she has something that she may want to share, amen. Sister Nelson, are you there? 